In this video, we're going to be tackling the elite code question number of islands. Let's jump right into it. So first things first, we're going to be given an array of arrays, an array with arrays inside of it, sometimes referred to as a matrix. And within this matrix, we're going to have ones and zeros in the form of a string. Ones represent land, zeros represent water. And our task is to identify how many different islands are within this matrix. Now, I purposely picked kind of a difficult example. So if you look at this, and I got tripped up by it too, so it's not a big deal. If you look at this diagram right here, how many different islands do you see? When I first saw this, I said there was only one island, but in this example, there are definitely three islands because the islands can only be connected to the left and the right and up and down. They cannot be connected diagonally. And that's kind of important because it's also going to play a role in the next part of our course, which is going to be depth first search. But before we do that, let's kind of take a step back here and let's just talk about this algorithm from a big picture standpoint. What we're going to do first things first, this is what we have to do right out of the gate, is we have to search through every single element. How exactly are we going to do that? Well, with a nested for loop, easy enough. And whenever we come to a one, which is going to be land, we need to do what's called a depth first search. Depth first search is actually very easy to understand. Let me explain. At the end of the day, all depth first search is is recursion and very simple recursion at that. If you look at the dumbed down version of the algorithm that we are about to create, you can clearly see Traverse Island is recursing. It's calling itself. But how exactly is this going to search throughout the graph for any islands? Well, as you can see within the parameters, this is where the secret is. The I minus one, the I plus one, J minus one, J plus one. This is what's actually moving. This is what's actually searching. So I, mo I minus one up, I plus one down, J minus one to the left, J plus one to the right. This is what's going to actually produce the movement. But here's where things even get greater. Because it's recursing, it's going to intelligently do this almost like a robotic vacuum cleaner that you see in people's houses. It's going to traverse throughout the graph for us every single time that we find an island and it's going to basically find all of the edges for us in a very intelligent fashion. That's the beauty of DFS. That's the beauty of a lot of these traversing algorithms. You just build them and you let them go and they do all of the searching for you. And that's what we're about to do in IntelliJ. So let's start coding. So we are inside of IntelliJ and the first thing that I'm going to do is create a brand new Java class we'll call this solution. So within this new class that we just created, we're going to create two methods. The first method is going to be the actual method that's required of us by leak code. It's going to be called num islands. It's going to take in a matrix called grid and return the number of islands. But to return the number of islands, we have to have a nice little piece of state to house our number of islands. So we'll just go ahead and create an integer variable just like that. Here's where things are going to get interesting. This is where we're going to actually start iterating through every single value searching for a one. Remember that we're trying to search for ones throughout this whole entire matrix and we need to iterate through every single value within the matrix. And we're going to do so with a nested for loop. Now, many people might already know this, but there's a huge reason why we have to use a nested for loop. If we just have a single for loop, it's only going to iterate through the array. It's not going to actually iterate through the contents. And in order to actually get down into the contents of the array, we need to iterate not only through the arrays, but within the array as well. It's kind of meta to think about. So let's go ahead and create the logic to search for the island. So we're going to use our indexes that we get from the actual for loops, and we're going to search for ones. And that's pretty much how that how we search through the whole entire array. So we'll say traverse island. We haven't made this is going to be our DFS algorithm. We haven't made this yet, but we'll go ahead just type it out so we can uh, get moving. And we're going to also increment the number of islands. 
So let's go down here. We need to return the number of islands and let's go ahead and start creating our private void traverse island method. So the first thing that we do in any recursive algorithm in any DFS algorithm is we create a base case. And this base case is going to cause our algorithm to stop whenever we reach water, whenever we reach zero. The AI is going to try to put one there, but make sure that it's zero. And the reason that we're going to do that is because we only want to search through land. We're searching for the number of islands. And if we encounter water, if we encounter zero, we want our algorithm to stop searching. Next thing that we're going to do is whenever we actually do get past the base case, whenever we actually do find a piece of land with our actual algorithm, we're going to mark it zero. And the reason that we're going to mark it zero is because in DFS and in a lot of algorithms, you have to mark things as visited. You could do this with a hash map, but in our case, we can easily just get away with making it a zero. And finally, the fun part. This is where we're actually going to do the traversal. So for each traversal, we need to do what are called boundary checks. Boundary checks are going to prevent us from going places that we can't actually go. So if there's no values up above something like this, it's not going to traverse. This is going to make our algorithm way more efficient, and it's also going to prevent what are called index out of bounds issues. So we're going to say traverse island, we're going to go ahead pass in the grid, and we want I minus one. That is what's going to move us up. Now we're going to do the exact opposite. We are, instead of I minus zero, we're going to check the actual length of the grid, and you want to make sure that the I is less than. And what we're going to do is we're going to traverse, but we're going to plus one. And this is the same exact part as we did before, but it's just going to be with J. So we're going to be moving left to right. So we're going to say J minus one, and then the exact same thing down below it, but we're going to be going into the actual grid itself and not just pulling out the actual the whole entire grid. And we're going to traverse J plus one. And that's pretty much it. That's a pretty lengthy algorithm. Let's go ahead. I'm going to get out of the full screen mode and going to toss this code into lead code and see what we get. So I'll go ahead, start off with my uh, private method here. Go ahead, copy this. So bring over lead code. I'm going to go ahead and place that down there. Then I'm going to get the second chunk of code. So I'm going to get this part right here. Go ahead, paste that within the actual function in leak code. Let's go ahead and run it, see what we get. And our test cases are accepted. I'm excited because I thought for sure it was going to fail. Hit the submit, congratulations. So let's go ahead and see what our time complexity is MN and our memory complexity, our space complexity is MN as well too. We have passed the interview. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. As always, thank you for watching.